For more on uh, the U.S. economy, we bring in Mike Archbold. He's the former CEO of GNC and a trustee at the Committee for Economic Development. Uh, good to see you, sir. Um, let's start with the Federal Reserve's big announcement today. What are your thoughts? So I, I think, so thanks for having me, Phil. And, and I think the, my thought is that they had to do it, right? They were really so far behind in the movement here. The, the interest rate, the inflation rates have actually been so high, very high for 12 months. And the Fed has, has really not reacted. Of course, they were talking about the concern that inflation was in fact going to be transitory, which of course we now know that was, that was wrong. So the Fed is now in a position of having to play catch up. Right, so they had no choice but to to increase rates, and hope that they can actually thread the needle and not trip the economy into a recession. So the question is, some of the chatter today that I heard was that maybe the Fed is actually now ahead of the curve, which is, I guess, I suppose, why the markets reacted so positively to that. Do you share that view? Um, I, I don't know that I share the view that they're ahead of the curve. Um, they may be on the curve or potentially even slightly behind the curve. You know, some are saying that they're kind of at the neutral rate now, which would mean they're no longer promoting growth or restricting growth. Uh, the question is whether they're really at that rate now or whether, in fact, they're going to need to do another rate increase, which Chair Powell actually uh, intimated would be coming in September with the question being of whether it was, in fact, a 50 basis point move or another 75 basis point yeah, move. I, I, and I don't know if, if everyone remembers this, but I still remember the days of, of Greenspan, that moves were made very incrementally and very slowly. And part of the thought process is that it takes time for these decisions by the Fed to be impacted into the real economy. So you have to wait several months before you see rate cuts or rate increases. And it seems like we're very reactionary right now. We'll get some high data on inflation or the economy, and, and immediately we'll think, oh, 50 basis points one way or the other. Is this, is this the new normal? So it's an interesting insight, Phil, because the, the, the Fed has at times switched between uh, anticipating uh, what the market will do uh, and really second guessing the, the market with things like inflation to being data driven. And now they're talking again about being data driven and waiting for the, the results to actually come in. But I think one of the, the interesting things right now is, is on the continuum of, of balancing the, the, the two priorities of the two mandates of the Federal Reserve, they have to balance inflation and maximum employment. And if you listen to Chair Powell's uh, speech today, uh, he pretty much said that uh, it's 100 percent focus on inflation and price stability. And so we'll take him at his word that they're going to be doing that without regard to what the impact might be on employment. In fact, when someone questioned him on the employment, he said the path to that really is through first ensuring that and achieving price stability. He must have mentioned the 2 percent target no fewer than six times in the course of a of a short prepared remarks. Yeah, well, uh, the, certainly the price stability has always been a uh, mantra of the Fed. Uh, but in the face of full employment, which is basically what we have now, and you see wages increase, which means um, companies have to raise prices, which means retailers have to raise their prices, it seems like it's a vicious cycle. Is this what's needed to slow everything down? And ultimately, I, I suppose maybe the word recession is not the right word, but sort of just flatten out the economy so that we can catch up? Well, so certainly contracting from the heights that it is, recession may in fact be in the cards. You know, um, the, so some say the the cure for inflation is inflation, right? Because as as we react to it and the, and uh, costs go up, uh, it it naturally causes some kind of contraction in consumer spending. So I think it's it'll be interesting to see how it plays out over the next several months. We do have a couple of months before the the Fed's next move. But in the meanwhile, we have the, the markets, the Treasury markets, seeming to think that uh, Chair Powell has hit the exact right tone and is going to somehow thread the needle to not create a recession. But on the other hand, we have the Consumer Sentiment Index that came out from the conference board that has shown three straight months of decline. And importantly on that is their expectations index, which is what does the consumer think about the economy going forward, was actually on the decline which could indicate that we could be approaching a recession 
we'll have to see how this plays yeah, out. We, we, we've seen some pretty low numbers when it comes to consumer confidence. The other thing that I think the market hasn't focused on is the impact this has, have on, has on businesses, right? Because businesses borrow at market rates. When the market rates go from 2, 3, 4 to 5 percent, companies make decisions not to spend on CapEx or at least reduce some of the risk they have on their books. Have we seen any follow through in whether it's real estate or uh, business CapEx in terms of building factories, have we seen an impact on the higher rates yet? So n not as yet. In fact, we, we've kind of seen the, the, the opposite as, as businesses and you know, retailers have caught up on their inventory where they were, they were challenged with getting inventory and they were you know, supply constrained, where now we've heard in the last couple of weeks from some retailers that they have excess inventory and now would actually need to be discounting in order to get their inventory levels to the right level. Right, so that in and of itself should help us at some inflation. But uh, I think your your broader point, which is the increase in interest rates, is an increase in costs for everything, right? Whether it be inventory or capex, right. etc. And over the long term, those costs are actually borne by the consumer, so they have to be passed through somehow. Mike, this is some of the best insight we've had on our show, uh, especially when it comes to rates. I really appreciate you taking the time with us. Mike Archbold, uh, former CEO of GNC and a trustee at the Committee for Economic Development. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Phil. Meanwhile.